former president as he slowly walked down the Mar-a-Lago colonnade, a structure reminiscent of the line of pillars outside the Oval Office and alongside the Rose Garden. The ovation continued until he got to the archway leading to the living room where I had interviewed him. He pointed to a few of the guests. He waved and pumped his fist and then made his way to a table just like the others, although this table had a small velvet rope around it. The applause continued until Trump took his seat. As the guests returned to their dinners, I asked one of the members how often this happens. How often does the former president stroll along the colonnade on his way to dinner as members of his club rise to their feet in rapturous applause? Every night, he told me. Every night. Introduction one of the first calls I made as I watched the rioters move toward the Capitol building on January 6, 2021, was to John Kelly, the retired four-star Marine general who previously had served as President Trump's first chief of staff. More than a year before the 2020 election, as I was finishing front row at the Trump show, I had asked Kelly what would happen if Trump lost the election and refused to concede. Back then, the question was a hypothetical one, but it was one I had been thinking about for a long time. What if Trump tried to stay in the White House? How would this all end? Oh, he'll leave, Kelly told me back then, and if he refuses to leave, there are people who will escort him out. As chief of staff, Kelly had seen firsthand how Trump operates, and he knew how the White House really functions. Clearly, he had thought about this before and had played out the scenario in his mind. If he tried to chain himself to the resolute, Kelly told me, referring to the enormous desk in the Oval Office, they would simply cut the chains and carry him out. Kelly has a deep and commanding voice befitting a retired four-star Marine general. He said these words with authority, as if he was speaking an immutable truth that needed no further discussion. To Kelly, it wasn't complicated. If Trump loses, he'll be gone at noon on January 20th, 2021. That's what the Constitution dictates. It's as simple as that. I didn't ask any more questions, but I still had a few. Who would escort him out? Who would cut the chains? Who were they? Would it be the Secret Service? Would it be the Marine who stands sentry at the entrance of the West Wing? The image Kelly described was a crazy one, a defeated president getting dragged from the White House while he refuses to admit defeat. Since John Adams lost re-election to Thomas Jefferson in 1800, every defeated president has accepted the results and voluntarily left office. The scenario described by John Kelly seemed too disturbing and too absurd to consider any further. I tried not to think about it again. By January 6, the question was no longer hypothetical. Trump wasn't due to leave the White House for two more weeks, but for nearly two months he had been denying the results of the election. And now his supporters were storming the Capitol and trying to stop the certification of Joe Biden's victory. I broke off from ABC's live coverage of the terrifying scene unfolding on Capitol Hill, and I called Kelly. This isn't America, he told me. Like any rational person in America, he was angry about what was happening, and he was clear that the man he had served as chief of staff was to blame. If he was a real man, he would go down to the Capitol and tell them to stop, he said, telling me that it was time for the Trump cabinet to step in to save the country by declaring Trump mentally unfit and removing him from office. If I was still there, I would call the cabinet and start talking about the 25th Amendment, he told me. Invoking the 25th Amendment and getting a majority of the cabinet to agree the president is unfit for office is the equivalent of cutting the chains and forcibly escorting the president from the Oval Office. There would be more talk of the 25th Amendment that night and over the coming days, but the first mention of it I had heard on January 6th was from Donald Trump's former chief of staff, while the rioters were still inside the Capitol building. Kelly's views were shared by many who had supported and served Trump, and by more than a few who were still serving in positions of authority in his administration. I spoke to people close to Trump during the final days and weeks in office who told me they thought Trump was mentally unstable, that he had literally gone mad. Members of his cabinet began talking about invoking the 25th Amendment during the evening of January 6th. They may not acknowledge this fact publicly while Trump is still a political force, but they were. 
lawyers were asked to quiet